My guest today has been spreading the good word of the Book of Mormon for five years now on Broadway, in the West End, in Chicago, even on the Tony Awards. It's Elder Price himself, Nick Rouleau. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, not much. Five years. Five years. I noticed that you mentioned that on social media, that milestone, and I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, it's like been a, a big chunk time. of life. Yeah. I feel like I've grown up at the Book of Mormon. Yeah? Yeah. I started when I was 24, and I'm almost 30 now. Oh. <clears throat> Still playing 19. <laughs> and, they um, allow that at the Book of Mormon. They, they do. They, they allow they, a little bit older, boyish, too. <laughs> it's good, you're good to go. Exactly. <laughs> Does that make you, like, the longest running something? I am the, the longest running Elder Price. There's not, like, a Cunningham that's run that long, either. No, there has not been. So you're been. just, like, the long... You're that's the, it. You're, 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 like, the... Aside from the original cast that's still in, on Broadway, which there are still a handful of, course, yeah. of, of people there, um, yeah. So do you get some sort of trophy, a medal, no. raise? <laughs> I happens? should. I should get a trophy. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to Scott Rudin about this. <laughs> Give me a trophy. Did you imagine, because you were a young actor, and, and this was sort of your first big thing. Yeah, absolutely. Your Broadway debut. Mm -hmm. It's your, like, if you look at your resume, it's like one it's Broadway like credit, one London credit. right there. This is it. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure you didn't imagine maybe going into something that would end up being such a... I mean, absolutely. I didn't imagine any of this would happen the way it did. I, I joined Book of Mormon just after they actually opened. Right. So um, I was the first standby. It was for like Elder the hottest Price. thing. Yeah. I and, mean, it and, still is. And I had just seen it. I watched it on the Tony Awards, and I had seen it in New York, and I was like, I need to be in the show. So I came on sort of at like the top of all the hype, which was amazing. But I never imagined my personal journey with the show would take me where it has. Right. It's been absolutely incredible. Right. And you were an NYU kid, right? You went to NYU. I was an NYU kid. Okay. Um, and then what? And then you graduated from NYU. Graduated from NYU. I went right to work for Disney Cruise Line. Oh, that's right. I played Woody in Toy Story the Musical, wearing plastic hair for ten <laughs> months of my life. I want to get back to the cruise line in a minute. Okay. So you were working. Mm hmm you, And then I did a, I did a non equity tour. Okay. And, and I came into audition for Book of Mormon right after that, as soon as that ended. Cool. Um, it was a very quick process. Yeah. About a week of auditions and then directly into the show. But you must have known you're like uh, you're a very fresh scrubbed guy, right? I mean sure. the big the big smile you just showed like the big smile. <laughs> Huge teeth. Yeah, and your dad your dad involved. My dad your, the orthodontist. Your dad the orthodontist <laughs> made made sure you had the perfect uh, <laughs> book of Mormon teeth. Exactly. Uh, so you must have said like this is perfect for me. I mean like when you're an actor you see certain things and you just go Yeah. Like, I mean like I knew it was totally something that I could do. And I knew that, it, like physically, type-wise, I was absolutely right for it. Yeah. But I still, you know, I, I, when I was auditioning, I was the only person in the final callbacks who didn't have a Broadway credit on his resume. You know, wasn't a member of Actor, Actors Equity. I was still wow, non-equity okay. at the time. And so I was looking around at the audition room, going like, "All right, well, this has been a cool experience, and this is where it ends." Right. <laughs> so I was not expecting to get the call that that I actually booked it. Right. And you booked it. And I booked it. <laughs> I was on the bus to Staten Island. I was going to visit my friend who lives out in Staten Island. Uh -huh. It was rush hour traffic. I was sitting with a friend and my agent calls me, tells me the good news. And I literally just started screaming in the middle of the bus and then like breaking down crying. People are like, what the f is he doing? <laughs> 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 um, but it was, it was a really cool experience. Did you tell anyone? I, I'm in the Book so, of Mormon. <laughs> they all knew what it was. People, the people in the rows, like, kind of bef uh, in front and behind me picked up on it. Um, I called my parents, and then yeah. we all started crying. And yeah. It was, it was very exciting. It's, it's, it means major. Yeah. It's major. I mean, it's, it's changed my life. It's been great. And so you started as Andrew Reynolds' understudy, correct? His so you were in the ensemble? Yeah. No, so I was just, just his standby. standby. So I was in the building, up on the sixth floor with Jared Gertner, who was Josh Gad's standby. Uh -huh. And we uh, just sat and waited. And so you would have to show up like a half hour, like yeah, the regular there every cast. show, just as you would be, Literally shaved there for every and, show. and sort of ready to go. Okay. Um, but just full doesn't take long backstage. to get into that costume. The I mean. costume takes, yeah. And I was also standing by for Andrew Randalls, who's one of the most solid professional yeah. people in the business, and so I was never worried. There was never a last minute <laughs> there emergency was There was with never Andrew. one of those. Never moments. for me. I never had one of those moments. He never where like I went showed on. up at the last minute. and Went, I can't. I can't never. Stop. Like with Andrew, you knew, like if he was going to be out, you knew like at least 24 hours in advance. Like he was really sort of yeah. rock solid in that way. Yeah. So it made standing by super easy. You had been there like almost a year before. A full you, year. Yeah, before you got cast. Um, or almost a full year, yeah. And by that time you'd gone on a bit. Mm -hmm. but, but it wasn't a given that, that, that you were No, absolutely going to not. The and job. it was at this, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on casting wise because they knew that the Chicago company was coming and right. they knew the first national tour was going out. So they were trying to kind of like fit all the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. So I kind of thought I would be shipped off on the road if I was going to go anywhere. Right. Never right. thinking I would take over for Andrew. Right. That's a, that must be like a, a weird period of time though when you're backstage and you're sort of like 
you must hear whispers and there's Absolutely. certain people on the team that maybe can give you information and like. Yeah, and you, I don't know, you just try not to think about it too much. This show is still, like I walk by the theater, we're, we're really across the street from the yeah. theater, our office, <laughs> and uh, I walk by it all the time during the lottery and it's still like the crazy, like. I mean, we still draw people. a great crowd for yeah. the lottery every night. We are sold out, we're at like 104% every night. Crazy. I mean, we are so lucky. It's absolutely incredible. In London, too, sold out every night. Yep. On tour, sold out every night. Five years in, it's kind of, it's really crazy. You're cra you're so spoiled. We, I mean, are, we and we know that. Yeah. <laughs> and we say it all the time. We're like, we are very spoiled. Like, our bad audience is any other show's, like, best audience sometimes. Right. So, like, we, we know that we have a good thing. So can you still find things? Like, what was the last, maybe, um, cool moment? I'm sure, and I'm sure you sort of, like, react differently to different parts of the show every night and certain yeah, things well, it, jump it's, out. It's all different. So like with every company I've I've done, yeah, we've have. sort of got a new rehearsal process, which is How many great. Cunninghams have you had? Do I you have know? had, yeah, 15 Cunninghams. 15. So you've done with a lot of different guys and, and all different types of guys. All different types. Fat, skinny, Jewish, not Jewish. <laughs> Those usually tend to be the four main types of Cunninghams. Those are the, <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> it's usually where it goes. But with each of them, obviously, there's a different, you know, there's a different way we play with each other. So you find different meanings in the words right. through that way. I've also had the great opportunity to go in the rehearsal room like four different times with the show. Mm. Um, working with Casey, Nicola, working with Matt and Trey, working with Bobby. Wow. And there's always something new to find, which mm -hmm. is great. You know, when I first started the show, I was guilty of watching Andrew Randall's every night and trying to copy his performance. Right. And it's not so, a bad template. Which was obviously <laughs> great. And, right. and it worked for him and it didn't work great for me. It got mm. me by, but it wasn't what what was gonna fit me perfectly. Okay. So when I went to Chicago, uh, Casey Nicola was like hard on me day in and day out trying to strip me of all my Andrewisms and trying to find what Nick's version of Elder Price mm -hmm. was. And so that was a really, really tough couple weeks in the rehearsal room because I was still doing the show at night here in New York right. and I was rehearsing for Chicago during the day at New 42. So you're doing the Andrew Reynolds impersonation at night. At night. <laughs> and then I'm working on the Nick version during the day. And then the things we find, trying to try them out at night and see, like, did that work? Did that not work? Right. Going back in the room the next day and being like, all right, that tanked. So, like, let's try something else. Well, because when you're the standby, they want you to replicate the performance. I mean, in I mean, a way, they do. Know. Like, and, 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 you know, like, to perform with Josh Gad, he's used to the Andrew doing the show yeah. a certain way. So I had to sort of fill that gap and, right. like, make it, you know, what he was used to so he didn't feel uncomfortable. Right. So, so Chicago was an opportunity. Chicago was the first time I feel like where I found my version of Elder Price, where I right. really got to find that and find it with Ben, Ben Platt. And we got to find our version of the show together, which mm -hmm. I think was really successful. And so that was really nice, very freeing experience. That Ben Platt kid, he's doing well. He's huh? okay. Like he's like <laughs> kind of talented and his family's like kind of nice. And you know, he's one of my best friends and yeah, he's like a family member and his family embraced me in Chicago and yeah. they continue to and he's uh, he's good people. It's funny because when he was cast, he was atypical. He didn't look like Josh Gad. Absolutely. At all. Smaller, younger, mm -hmm. right? I mean, just... He was 19 when we started. Yeah, he was like a little kid. And now he's like a third of the size that he was then. <laughs> What the hell? He's happened? teeny. <laughs> well, now he's like, I guess because he was playing 19 and now he says he's playing 17 in Dear Evan Hansen, so right. he needs to be even skinnier. I was like, okay. He's super, he's super soul cycling out. He I is mean, soul cycling it's for crazy. his life. Do you even recognize him on the street? Just no, like when I got back from London, I hadn't seen him in a year. <laughs> right. And I saw him, I was like, where did you go? Like you lost an entire person. <laughs> This is crazy. Nice guy, though. Yeah, he's super sweet. But did you get to see him in Dear Evan Hansen? I saw him in Dear Evan Hansen in um, D.C. So okay. when I was in London, I actually came back and stopped by on vacation and saw him in the show. I didn't get to see it here yet. I'm waiting to see it on Broadway. So uh, what's backstage life like at Book of Mormon on Broadway? I mean, you always have new, new, what are they, missionaries? What are you calling <laughs> Yeah, they are, are they missionaries. Are they you know, we have a very <laughs> consistent group of missionaries, but, but we have a lot of people in and out of the building all the time. It's a really great atmosphere backstage. We're really lucky. Matt and Trey need to do a new show. They do. Right? What's the next They're too busy them? working on video games. Is that what it is? They've done two video games now, which have been so successful. The most recent one. Are you a video gamer? Uh, not really. No. But I just love the title of the new one. Have what you heard this title? No. It's called The Fractured Butthole, <laughs> which if you read it out, it's just The Fractured Butthole, <laughs> which was funny because we were sitting in stage management and our producer, Anne Garafino, who is the executive producer of South Park and works on the video games. Yeah. She's the nicest lady. She's like mom. And, um, you know, sort of just very soft-spoken and, and she doesn't say a lot of words like that. And so I asked her what the new title was and she just, 
says it and her face turned bright red and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the fractured butthole. They're but yeah, busy. they should do another Broadway show. I know they, they proved themselves. Should. I know they're like, yeah, we could do it. We made a hit, but I don't know. Well, another they should. One. And yeah. do a move and do a book of more movie. Let's just do it all. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot more still to come. Yeah, but Did they also have South Park, so you know they're oh, a little yeah, busy. That. They're oh, yeah, a that. little, little. And what show. was London like? London was absolutely so amazing. Did you go over right when Gavin Creel left? There was a little interim. There's about six months in okay. between the two of us, right. but okay. we um, that actually all came about because I was visiting Gavin and Jared who were doing it in London. Yeah, I came on vacation and and stayed with them for a week. And Gavin and I were like sitting around. I was like, Gavin, I love London. He's like, I want to go back to New York. I was like. Why don't we switch? Let's switch lives. <laughs> it's like like a movie let's switch plot. lives. <laughs> and like that's kind of like actually how it happened. Really? Did like you just go to, and you went to the show and you were like, we're like can we we're switch? switch. <laughs> we both talked to Anne, our producer, and we're like, you know, he'd like to go here and I'd like to go here. Like, can we make this happen? And she was like, absolutely, let's make it happen. And um, did you live in his apartment and wear all his clothes? <laughs> exactly. I just lived <laughs> exact his whole life. life swap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And there's American stars in it now. Price and Cunningham, since they opened in London, have always been American. Interesting. But not um, all the roles. Just um, those two. Okay. Um, a couple Nabalungis here and there have come okay, in yeah. um, from America, but uh, I, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what it is. It's interesting that that works. You know what it I mean? It does. And, and yeah. The, the Brits. Have, I mean, it's such it. a distinctly American show, and yeah. I think they wanted to make sure that that tone was set from the very beginning. Nothing against the Brits because they have so much talent and they yeah. can and they can do it. But it's been yeah. Do I'm you, not complaining. Do you miss? Well, so how long was your entire? I run? was there for a whole year. A whole year. I took yeah. A whole year on there. So what, do you miss anything about London? Nando's. Do you know Nando's? I this chicken familiar. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Miss Nando's. I do know that. That yeah, is like the like, place I miss most. It's like a fast food. <laughs> kind of. It's like Isn't peri peri chicken. Okay. Um, it's like Panera, but mm. just with chicken. I'm going to London. I'll bring you some back. I'll Thank bring you a big you. pile of Nando. It. I appreciate it. They actually have some in the U.S. now, but not in New York. But I just London was so cool because of the the history there. Yeah. So like every day off. I could like hop on a train and go two hours in any direction and be in the coolest town that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, they also have four weeks of mandatory vacation while you're over there, which oh. for Broadway we only get two, so that was awesome. Wow. So I was just traveling all the time. Paid vacation. Yeah. Four it's weeks. Four weeks. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What was the coolest place you got to go? Salzburg. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm obsessed with the sound of music. It was my favorite movie growing up. That's shocking that you would have anything in common with the trap the about traps. <laughs> did, did you ever do sound of music? Uh, I did. I played Rolf once when okay. I was like 14. Okay. I, I forgot. I want to go back to Woody. So you were Woody in Toy Story, which is obviously something you would have to do on Broadway. Let's do it. No, I don't know. I mean, why not? Why not? <laughs> I, I don't know. How wooden was that performance? You I, said you had plastic hair. I mean, hair. so I had plastic hair yeah. and I was wearing you a cruise line. an inch of foam on the rest of my body okay. so that I looked very puffy. It was a miserable costume. Yeah. The only place heat escaped from your body was your fingertips. What? <laughs> Because like everything was covered here and glued down, and then everything else is just foam. That's horrible. So and we would do two shows a night, and you know they don't have a lot of time to dry out that costume. So you were sweating, Ooh. and you had an hour between shows, and you were going to your next show, putting on the costume for the second show, and it was. Oh man! Wet. Shout out to whatever kids doing that role right now. It was it was tough. It was really tough. And you were on a Disney cruise. A Disney cruise. So there's a lot of families. So Lots of kids. Now, when I've been on cruise cruise ships, yeah. I find it so interesting. There's always like the area where the, the staff lives. Yeah. And then there's like the tourists yeah. on, on the other areas. So you have your own like floors, right? Yeah. Like all low, underneath, all low. Under, under, it's underwater like, mostly. Yeah, it's like you're underwater. You're the, the lower class on the Titanic. Exactly. You're down there. So what is life like down there? Is it is it a little less Disney than what's happening upstairs? Or I, I mean, it's this. not as ma it's definitely not as magical as it is upstairs. <laughs> it's it's <not> very <laughs> much uh, dirty and plain. What was the first time you got on stage? What was the first time you had any sort of like, I want to sing and dance? Yeah. Well, so the first show I ever did was Peter Pan when I was eight. Oh, okay. I played a lost boy, slightly soiled. Natural. What's um, what, which one? Slightly soiled, the one who has his name um, like sewn into his clothing. I think it was on Peter Pan Live. I want to say it was F. Michael. Haney. Do you know F. Michael? Yeah. Yeah, I think but he I call was him F. Michael Haney. F. Michael Haney. Okay. Is that his name? Well, that's his full name. What? F. Michael. <laughs> F. Michael F. Haney. Michael. Okay, I don't F. know. F. Michael. Um, Hi, F. <laughs> but whenever I see those Lost Boy names, it just looks like they make them up for each production. Are they actually set? I think they're pretty much <laughs> set. That was called? like a real one. What, slightly what? soiled. Okay. All right. Slightly soiled. Okay. That's my name. Okay. That was my one line. It's not my favorite show. I got to be honest. It's, no. It's just, um, so you were a Lost Boy. I was and, a Lost and Boy. And you were like, this is this is awesome. I was so happy. I there's a there's this production photo of the show where Wendy is lying on the floor with an arrow in her heart, and everyone is around her, really sad. 
Orlandi. And I am looking directly at the camera with a huge smile on my face. <laughs> so so you're I didn't, a terrible actor. I didn't know what acting was. <laughs> terrible actor, or terrible instincts. But I was really happy. <laughs> so I think my mom was like, I think there's something to this. Like, we should put him in, That's in more shows. So your, your parents were like, this is cool. They were like, very supportive yeah. from like day one, which has been really nice. What's your favorite thing you got to do before um, you became an, a fancy equity actor? Like my favorite show? Yeah, like what, what did I miss? <sighs> what was like a great... I was a 17-year-old Jean Valjean. Oh my god. Which was one of my favorite performances. Wow. I also got to do Aida twice in high school. Once as Radames and once as Marib. Oh, oh. oh. Which you can see. Yeah, not I traditional definitely casting. look very wow. African American. Does Book of Mormon typecast you at all in terms of your career? Because now you're like, look at you, you're like this super, you can do that. I mean, the golden I guess smile. so, like, yeah. You know, we, get the, you know, we, get, we got that. But do you want to like show people like a different, like a darker side in the next Yeah, because do, I or? would like to do, like, I feel like people like pigeonhole me into like this comedian now that I've done, like this comedy that I'm funny. Yeah. And like, I don't think I'm very funny. Like, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think Elder Price's comedy comes from like reacting to someone else being ridiculous. Uh, right, okay. So it's like very much the straight man comedy, yeah. just reacting. Yeah, you're pretty funny, but I'd love well, to see you do Jean Valjean. Why not? I would like to do something serious. I love to, you know, it is nice though when you're doing a show for five years to do something like Book of Mormon instead of Les Mis five years every night, right. eight times a that, week. Like, that would be, be probably impossible. emotionally exhausting. Yeah. This at least is fun and happy and upbeat every right. night. Everyone's happy at the end. Yeah. You walk home. It's got a good message. and Be happy. Does it make your life happier? Or you just go I think home so. And, are you just miserable at home? No. <laughs> I'm a little miserable now because we're redoing our bathroom. We're having a renovation. So we have no, oh, really? no toilet and shower. So that's a little tough. So you're peeing where? Kitchen Everywhere. Sink? No, no. <laughs> we have a very generous neighbor a couple of floors down who's letting us borrow their bathroom. But... That's it's a tough. It's wow. Tough. Okay. First world problems. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's a good. That's a yeah, good. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. To have. So. Um, so I don't know. Do you have any like dream roles? Do you have any like I don't know. What do you? I mean, how long do you see the Mormon mission going? <laughs> You've, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, it's been five years, and I'm definitely in the show through February, and we'll see what happens after that. They definitely like you. It must feel good that they like you. Yeah. It's They're nice. like, wow, look, these people really like me. I mean, me. they treat us so well. Yeah. Um, and it's such a good group of people, so it's it's a hard show to leave. And like, what am I going to leave to do that's going to be at this level next? Like, right. I've, I've come to the realization that whatever is next will sort of be a step down, and that's not a bad thing. Maybe Daddy's Boy on Broadway? Maybe? I mean, Daddy's let's get a full Daddy's Boy episode in season three of Kimmy Schmidt. At that least. Would be so Daddy's awesome. Boy, in case people missed it, on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yes. It's like smash hit. Your legs looked amazing. Thank you. Amazing legs. Thank you. That was some of the best legs on Netflix. Oh, thank you. Uh, and you were a sailor boy <laughs> in the shortest shorts ever. And Jefferson Mays Jefferson was your Mays daddy. And John Colum was and John daddy's Colum daddy. Legends. Yeah, it was like a big uh, musical spoof, right? Yeah. Was that fun? It was. I mean, that was a blast. Like I got there at like eight in the morning, and they're like, "Here's a song that like you know we're just sending you right now, and you're gonna record in ten minutes." And you're like, wow. "Oh, okay, cool." And they're like, "Our producer didn't really show up, so do you mind if like Tina produces this?" And I look over, and it's Tina Fey. Wow. And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like this is like I literally I tried to like Snapchat her for my sister because my sister's a really big fan. <laughs> so like I did manage to get like the haziest little Snapchat. Did you have to we play really cool? Studio. I did. You I pretended to, to be really like, like like just really like. You can't be like, "Oh my god, oh my not god!" Not freaking out can about I get a her. selfie? And you yeah, can't right. Do all that. I didn't yeah, get a picture. You're a professional. Yeah, because Impression. you know you're there in a work environment. And you want to keep it cool, right? But so I was freaking was out inside. So she, she was, was there. there. Her husband Jeff Richmond wrote the song. Okay. And, you know they're working on Mean Girls. Yeah, um, he's super talented, and and he directed that part of the episode too. I'll never forget walking out on set in those short shorts for the first time because no one had seen them before. The crew, yeah. all the extras that were there on stage, and we had quite a few, and everyone just pointed and laughed at me. <laughs> so that was nice. It was a nice way to to, to walk out on at. set for the because first you're time. funny. Listen, I'm funny. Naturally <laughs> funny. So, okay, so maybe something a little different next time, but, but we're in yeah. Mormon for now. We're in Mormon for now it's and still loving life it. Life is nice and the smash hip. It's great. And like literally, like you see those people every night like clamoring for tickets and they're I coming mean, from yeah. like all over the world now to see Pokemon. We joke Mormon. now that we're getting all the Hamilton rejects. So everyone who can't get into <laughs> Hamilton is now settling to come to the Book of Mormon where we used to be the Hamilton. Um, not anymore. <laughs> and someday there'll be another show. And there'll be that another Hamilton one. will get those rejects. Exactly. But yeah, you are awesome in the show. Thank you. And I loved having you here. It's and been great. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on, I mean, such a, a great, like you're a part of like Book of Mormon history. It's been, yeah, it's been. I mean, like some, although like, you know, years from now, there's going to be some guy that like might like, like do other almost get up to your record. You're going to have to like 
get back in there and get right, some I'm more I'm going to stick in for a couple more years then. I don't know. I like the fact that you're the longest running uh, leading missionary in, there we in go. Pokemon. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the way to say it. Well, we love having you on Broadway. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Nick. Thank you. And everyone needs to see the Book of Mormon at the Eugene O'Neill Theater right across the street, but you can't tell that from watching this. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.